God bless you all. Father, we thank you that you are the God of all the families of the earth. And we draw near to you because you bid us come. You have given us access to your throne. You said, come boldly before your throne of grace that we might find mercy and grace and help in time of need. This is a time of need. And we have obeyed you and we have drawn near tonight because we need mercy. We need grace and we need help in our time of need. You know the families that are represented here tonight. You understand because you're touched with the feeling of our needs. You understand, you've seen every tear that has fallen. You have heard, you, you understand the, the brokenness that many lives uh, have on the inside. But we pray today for the comfort of the Holy Spirit. We have entered into your gates with thanksgiving and with praise and with worship. And today, Lord, we want to look into your word because you send your word to heal us. You have also given a promise. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. And Lord, we give you thanks today that you have invited us and we are here at your bidding. Now, Father, instruct us in the way that we should go. Lead us in the path that we should take. Be with my mouth, be with my spirit, be with the hearts of those who will receive your word. Let your word go forth with power and anointing and let it accomplish the purpose whereunto it is sent today. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I thank you so very much. God bless you. Tonight I want to look at, at, at grief in the context of an enemy. Not a friend, but an enemy. I give God thanks for the, the, the word of God that says, Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? But having said that, loss leaves us with a pain that wasn't there before a pain that we have to learn to deal with. And if we are not properly instructed, that pain could control us. And for some people, they spend the rest of their lives steeped in grief. I'm here to be a messenger of God to tell you that need not be so. I want to look at it in the context of um, so 1 Samuel chapter 17, a, 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 a story that you know about David and Goliath. But we want to look at some principles in the word of God. I have been teaching over a period of time about the tools that you will need to do grief work because grief is hard work. And it is harder if you have to do it alone. And this is why we are here. So you won't have to do it alone. And as we um, look at the scripture, I want us to see where strengths, where our strengths lie. I want us to look at the enemy, not in a way where we have to hide and peep at him, but understand that there is nothing that can stand between us and the victory that God has declared. He was wounded, Jesus was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace or the price, the cost of it was upon him. And by his stripes, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> by his stripes, we are healed. 
I want to reach out. I want you to reach out with me today to lay hold of that healing that God has declared. Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 18, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. When God makes a promise like that, we need to be expectant. And that is one of the tools that we, we need to, to understand, that God wants to equip us. And uh, for those of you who are with us for the first time, I need to very quickly talk about the tools that we've been talking about for a while now. The tools that we would need and you would need to do grief work. Your Bible. Your Bible is the voice of God. God has something to say to us in our trouble. Every time we are faced with, 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 with a situation, God has something to say. We need not to look for it in the trees, in the skies, in the what. He sends his word to heal us. We need to be in the word. And the second tool that I suggested that God, God gave to me, that brought me healing and delivered me, broke a fetter in my life. I had been grieving for years, not knowing that I did not need to. But the second, the second tool besides your Bible is a notebook, a journal, where you can write what you understand God is saying to you. Your notebook is personal. You can write in the language you understand. I used to have a notebook that I used to write my pain, and I did it year after year. I used to write it in shorthand, and I used to code it so even anybody who could read shorthand could not read my notes. I was keeping my pain private and didn't know that I didn't need to do it until God broke a fetter and I could think about it now and I could laugh at it. But I, I can't laugh too long because God has given me a responsibility to go back and teach others that they don't need to keep a journal of their pain. And if you are among those who have that practice, I want you to change the, the purpose of your notebook, of your journal, and begin what I did, what God led me to do, is to, to, to transform my future notebooks into um, faith books. So the very first one that I did, I named it my faith book. And when I went to write my woes and my troubles and my pains and my griefs, I, 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 I found the title that I had given it under the inspiration of God. And when I saw my faith book, I knew I couldn't put negative things there. I needed to have some faith things. So I said, God, you need to, and God, what, what he did is he, he, he washed my eyes with tears that I could see. He changed the way I looked at things. And I began to see things from his perspective. And this is why it is important for us to use our notebooks to capture what we understand God is saying to us. So that is your Bible is one tool. Your notebook or your journal is another. Well, of course, you need to have a pen. You need to have a highlighter. When you read in God's word, don't be afraid to write up in your Bible. Write it, write in it. If, if, you, if God gives you a promise, write the date next to it. Because if he gives you a promise, he's going to fulfill it. He stands behind his word to perform it. So when he performs it, it should have a second date next to that. It should have the date when he gave you the promise. And it should have a date when he fulfilled the promise. Because he said, I'm coming to you. We need to believe God. We need to trust him. He is not a man that he should lie. He wouldn't give you a promise and not fulfill it. He stands behind his word to perform it. If you are more, you know, if you are more adept with the keyboard and with whatever it is, find what works for you and where you can get 
easy recall because you're going to need those notes later on. Make sure that the word of God that comes to you, that you write the reference because you're going to need to go back to that at times. You need, you need to capture. And there are so many different ways that we could capture. You need to have a notebook when you are going to church. So you can write the sermons because God might speak to you there. God will speak to you there. He will speak to you in your quiet times. He will speak to you through your children. You teach your children to pray. And when you're faced with a trouble and you're pulling your hair out, a little child will come and say, Mom, we, we need to pray. Can we pray? So children come around and tell us what we need to do. And we need to know that that was God who came to us, not the child. But God, was, God comes to us in our trouble. And we need to understand that it's because of his love. God is the one who's seeking, you know, seeking and saving that which was lost. Sometimes we're lost in our grief. We lost, we overcome, we overwhelmed, and we swallowed up in it. And God comes and he finds us and he gives us a little glimmer of hope. Don't brush it off. You need to capture it. Always capture it. So now you have your Bible, you have your notebook. I, I also said we needed to have a calendar and we need to document what God is doing in our life day by day. God is doing miracles. And if we are looking for them, we will see them. If we're just looking out for the dark clouds, that's all we will see. But if there's a cloud the size of a man's hand, we know rain is coming. So we need to understand how, how to see God when he says he's coming and how to believe him and how to trust him. We need to make sure that we have our expectation up because if he says he's coming, he is coming. So one of the tools that we need to have is our expectation and our hope. Psalm 62 verse five said, truly my soul waiteth upon God for my expectation is from him. The psalmist in Psalm 121 verse 1 says, My eyes, I lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. We need to confess that we know where our help comes from. So we're not operating and living in a vacuum. And licking wounds, oh, the day for that is so gone. God, a new day has dawned upon us. And I believe that God has come to us through God's anatomy for marriage. And I know that some of you, your marriage has ended because, and that is why you're here. Uh, but it is the institution that has made this possible, that has created an, a platform for us to find different means of expression to meet the need of people. Now, the theme of the grief and loss support group, which is this group, this is an offshoot where we saw a need for support for those who are grieving. A platform that is needed for those who have experienced loss so that you're not lost in the abyss of your personal experience, but that you you have a place of refuge. You have a place where you can be boosted, where you can transition from grief to growth. Uh, I, I, I went through a, 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 a seminar where I experienced that, 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 that transition, literal, literal transition from grief to growth, it was a journey. Grief is not a destination, it is a journey. 
and we want you to journey with us. The essence of this platform is to help hurting people heal. And if you have a notebook, if you haven't written anything yet, that's a good place to start. The grief and loss support group, the essence of that group is helping hurting people heal. If you're hurting, you're in the right place. If you've been healed, you're in the right place. It takes healed people to help hurting people. I feel too many times the blind is leading the blind. And both are falling into the ditch. Nobody can help the other. We need to know that God is, God has made a way of escape for us in every trial. He said that. There have no temptation you, taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you or allow you to be tempted or to be pressed beyond measure. Above what you're able to bear. But he will, with the temptation, with the pressure, with the grief, with the burden, with the loss, he will, with all that thing that you're carrying, make a way of escape that you will be able to bear it. Doesn't that sound good? When he says he's, he's come to you, he's come with healing in his wings. He's come with healing in his word. God wants us to trust him. He is not setting us up to disappoint us. When God says, wait for me, let me tell you. When God says, wait, you might be, you might be waiting on something. You might have asked God for something. You might, have asked, you might have been praying for a breakthrough. You might have been praying for a miracle. When God says, wait, he's not setting you up to disappoint you. He is coming. That is the only sure foundation we have in God. That is the only place that you will never be disappointed. Now, I want to look at this in the context of tools, the tools we're talking about. We just shared about the tools. And the tools, my point tonight is do not despise the simplicity of the tools God has prescribed for you and me to do grief work. Grief work is hard work. It is hard if you have to do it alone. This platform promises you won't have to do it alone. And God promises that he is going to stand behind his word to perform it. I speak in confidence. I am not a bold person. But in the Lord, I am bold because I am speaking after him. And he cannot lie. And God wants to give all of us that boldness. God gave me a promise that is the energy of my life from now on. And that promise is there is going to be a band of survivors. You know, sometimes we talk to people and we ask, how are you going? And they say, well, I'm surviving. Not that kind of surviving. That is not the survivor I'm talking about. God says there is going to be a band of people who were once burdened. They were having problems over their heads. They couldn't cope with life. God says, you see those people, I am coming close to them. I am going to heal them. I'm going to deliver them. I'm going to bring them out of the places where they did not think they could ever survive or come out of. 
and I'm going to meet survivors. I'm going to give these people testimonies. I am talking to you out of a testimony. I'm not just talking because I read the scripture and I have a promise. And I am talking to you out of a testimony. And my confidence is because of my testimony. My life has changed, really, really changed, radically changed. And I'm telling you that I am teaching you out of the experience God has given. Some trust in horses and some in chariots. Some people want to number, like, like David numbered, to see how many we have on our side so we could, we could know we could fight this battle. If we could win this battle, if we have a certain number. You remember Gideon? He started with 32,000. God said, no, you have too many. Too many. And God dwindled that number down. And even when they had, had still had much, he said, now bring them to the, to, the, to the brook, to the river or the stream, and I'm going to thin them out for you. <laughs> Let me tell you. God dealing with quality. So he's doing a lot of thinning out right now. He's, he's, he's getting rid of a lot of fluff. <laughs> he's getting rid of a lot of the excess, the things we were carrying around that we thought we had to carry around. We didn't have to carry it. I carried grief for more year, years. Eh? I carried grief over a loss I had sustained and a loss I thought I would never be able to recover from. Well, the devil, you're a liar because I have overcome. And because I have overcome, God has given me a message. I thank you intercessors. I know that you prayed for me. I have needed that. But I am saying that we have tools that are better than the armory of kings. Kings trust in horses and chariots. We have a living God. And he is our God. And if God be for you, who can be against you? When all men forsook Paul, he said, God stood with me and strengthened me. I don't know who's standing with you. But if you have nobody but God, let me tell you, you have plenty. The day for licking wounds is past. Take your Bible from the shelf. Take your Bible from the drawer. Take your Bible from under your pillow. Take it from all the places that we have it other than on our laps and in our hands, reading it. We need to read the word of God. God sends his word to heal us. And if you are a candidate for healing, you need to get where the great physician is. better than the armory of kings. The, <laughs> let's look at the word of God and we'll see what happened here. The Philistines gathered and there was a mountain on one side and a mountain on the other. In verse three, the Philistines took, stood on one mountain on one side and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side. And there was a valley between them. That, this valley is very instructive. Eh? <laughs> I used to think about valley experiences. And some of you, God is saying, even though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, God says, fear no evil, for he is with you. God going to feed you in the presence of your enemies. He's going to lay a table before you. He's going to supply all your needs when everybody is waiting to see you. Drop down dead, swell and drop down dead. When everybody is waiting to see the end of you, let them look. They will see the beginning of you. 
It's a new day. A new day has done. God said, behold, I do a new thing. I'm telling you, something is happening. I, let me tell you, God is calling people home. I mean, every day. I, I remember when I was small, my father used to be always going to a funeral and I couldn't understand. And then as I got older, I said, maybe it's because he was older. Well, I am in that bracket, but I don't think it's only old age that takes people. We know that, right? We all know that. I believe God is calling some people home. And there are some things I want to do before he calls me home. There are some things I need to do before he calls me home. And this is one of them. I always said, Lord, you're giving me all this information and you're telling me right. And I remember one day I tried to say something. I tried to, to speak an answer that God had given me. I was in a forum where I heard a question that God had given me an answer. And I spoke it. And nobody heard it. I'm talking about God did not let anybody who was in that room hear what I said. He was dealing with me. He was dealing with teaching me to obey. So I got on my face before God and I started to cry. And I said, God, you gave me an answer for that question. And I heard the question. Nobody had the answer. And I spoke it and nobody heard it. What are you doing? God says to me, I did not tell you to speak it. I told you to write it. He was dealing with teaching me to obey. To obey is better than sacrifice. And to hearken is better than the fat of rams. First Samuel 15, 22, thereabout. To obey is better than sacrifice. You could add obedience to your tools because God might be saying something to you. When I was, well, I'm a counselor, but when I was in, when I was in active service as a counselor, what God would put in my heart many times, when I'm hearing what is, what, what is coming out of, of the pain of people, just to stop for a minute and ask, is there anything God has asked you to do that you haven't done yet? God put that in my mouth to ask, and I'm asking you tonight. Is there anything that God has asked you to do that you have not obeyed? Don't answer me. That was a question God is putting to you. That, that is some business you need to complete with God. And what God said to me in the, in the situations that I found myself in counsel was until you have fully obeyed God, don't come back to see me. That is strong language. Because I really can't help you. I cannot help you if you disobey God. Duh, right? So better than the armory of kings is the tools that God has given us. So let's look at it. These two armies posturing against each other, each on a mountain. And a champion comes out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath. And it talks about how big he was and everything like that. And what he was wearing, his, his, his um, helmet and a coat of mail and, and you know, how, how much it weighed and everything like that. And his, his legs, you're talking about this man was taught, he is a big giant and from head to foot, he is in armor and he has an armor bearer going in front of him holding a shield. And not only is he doing that, the scripture says he stood and he cried to the armies of Israel. He said to them, why are you come out to set your battle in array? 
Am not I a Philistine and you the servants to Saul? Choose you a man. He was calling for a man. You know what God do? God sent a boy. He said, choose you a man and send him, send him out to me. And if he is able to fight with me and to kill me, then will I be your servants. And if I prevail against him and kill him, you will be our servants and you will serve us. You think God going to set you up and make you fall long in front of the enemy? No, he's not going to do that. And the Philistine said, I defy. You see what happening? Let me tell you, grief does do that. Grief defies us. You wake up one day, you're feeling good. The next day I wake up and it was like day one. It's like, what just happened? Where did the time pass? How did I go back so far? So he said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. Let me tell you. Sometimes grief is like that. Grief is like a man. And the fight is like with a man. But let me tell you, you know who the champion of our army is? The people that know their God shall be strong and shall do exploits, Daniel. The people that know their God. The important thing is for us to know our God. Where are we going when he alone has the words of eternal life? Where else are we going to look for comfort when he is the God of all comfort? What door are we going to knock on to find comfort? When he is the father of mercies, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. Blessed be God, the father of mercies and the God of all comfort who comforts us in all our tribulation, that we might be able to comfort others with the same comfort. You see what comfort coming to you? <laughs> that tool, eh? Here I given you what I get. The same comfort I get is what I've given you. I know the caves that hurting people hide in. You know why I know it? Because I lived in those caves. You remember Elijah after Mount Carmel? Carmel Paul called on fire. God answered by fire. Let me put it this way. God answered by fire. And Jezebel sent a message. You see those prophets of ours that you went and killed? Well, this day not going to finish and I'm going to do the same to you. Elijah went into a cave and he hid and he started to complain before God. He just, God just heard him. So sometimes fear comes upon us and it cripples, cripples us. He went into a cave. God had to send an angel. And I'm telling you, God's sending an angel to you tonight. God will send an angel before you. What it is you're afraid? What are you afraid of? God will send his angel. So God sent an angel and to feed him, you know, get up, get up. But he was so overcome with grief and grief, grief. Let me tell you, a bad case of grief will make you not want to bathe, not want you to, to, to brush your teeth, not want you to, to, to eat not want you to see anybody, not want you to get out of bed, a bad case of grief will do that and more. A bad case of grief will make you leave home. I'm not telling you, eh? I'm just telling you that grief is an enemy. And an enemy that defies the armies of God. You are part of the army of God. If you're a seeker, get into a relationship with God so you can have the protection that comes from being a, a part of the army of God. This was to send me a man. God, go him. Let me tell you, all that posturing and that threatening that comes to, to you, God is hearing. Let me tell you, God is writing all the time. He is 
He is, he is your defense. So hear this. I need to fast forward because I need to bring this, 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 this up close. The tools that God has given you is better than the armory of kings. Fast forward. They were dismayed. Hear, hear what the army, the army of God. When they heard the words, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Fear brings torment. Deuteronomy 20 says when you go out to battle and you see enemies and you see horses and chariots and the people more than you, do not be afraid. Because the Lord is with you. The Lord your God is with you. Who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. You, you know. He says don't let your hearts faint. Fear not. Do not tremble. Neither be terrified. For the Lord your God is he that goeth with you. Look at that. With you. To fight for you. Against your enemies. To save you. God not fighting against you. He's a fighting against your enemies. To save you. So understand that is what they, they, they forgot. They didn't, they didn't think about our promise. They were just terrified. And here it is. Send me a man. All the man frightened. God sent a boy. His father said, go down to the battle and see how your brothers do. The youngest of the family. And he comes down. His brothers, three oldest brothers are in the battle. He said, look, you just come to see what good. You, you need to go. You know, not knowing God was sending the champion. And the champion was in the form of a boy, a shepherd boy. I don't know what deliverance God is sending to you, but I know he's sending deliverance. And I'm here to tell you that. And I'm here to tell you that God wants to break the fetter in your life. He is here to unlock the prison houses. That is what he told me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to do that. And every time I open my mouth to speak, I, I remember what God is saying. He says, you're going to unlock prison houses. You're going to set the captives free. Let me tell you, you want to do it too. And God wants us to be bold and brave and speak after him. Grief work is hard work, but it's better we do it and get over it rather than to just stay there and let cobweb come upon us. Grief can be overwhelming. It will threaten your future. The armies of God, is God there will defying you know? If God touch, if anybody touch you, is God there touching you know? So they're running and hiding, not knowing is God, is God. All this big threat and thing that they're talking is really the, the, the living God that he's throwing that out for. And God wouldn't just stand up and take that. So God bring a little boy from off of the field, out of the sheep. Look, put that sheep with a keeper. Come on. All these big men cowering and, 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 and hiding. Come on. Right? And the scripture says, day after day, this Philistine come in on the same words. And this time David heard them. And the scripture says, all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, verse 24, they fled from him and were so afraid. And um, David asks, what will be done for, 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 for the man that kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach? So this shepherd boy understood that there was a reproach going to be upon the people of God if this Philistine prevailed. And he said, who is this uncircumcised, um, uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? He talked like he knew God. And that is what we have to do. If we, the people that know their God shall be strong. So if you know God, understand God, God wants you to talk after him. He has said so that we must boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man will do to me. Right? This Philistine was a formidable enemy, just like grief. He was experienced, fully armed. He was threatening. The scripture said he cursed. He was cursing. Right? He was defiant. He said, I am defying the armies of the living God. 
or whatever he said. He was disrespectful because he was talking about our God like that. He was full of disdain. When he saw David, he saw it. You said, it, who, who, you don't know who I am? You know, some people is be like that, right? You don't know who I am, right? You, you, you come to me with what? Stick on stone and, 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 and thing, right? I'm going to feed you today to the birds of the air, right? And here it is, full of disdain. You have an armor bearer, if you please. And here is David, a humble shepherd boy, a protector of sheep. And that is why he was faithful in his duty. That is why God called him to be king eventually. This is why God has called him, because he knew how to take care of sheep. That's a good starting place. You may have a humble beginning, but God has set his love upon you and he's going to do something great. David knew his God. Look at the tools he have. Eh? He knew his God. He knew God's word. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He wrote that, right? He used to be alone. And I'm reading a book about, about the way of the shepherd. And shepherd, shepherds could, could become sheep. They could become out of their mind because this is, this is mundane, day after day after day. David didn't let his, his task get to him. He sang songs unto his Lord in the midst of his aloneness. That's a good instruction for us, not so? In the midst of his aloneness, he worshiped God. And so he knew God, he knew his word, knew God's word, and he knew his tools. The king says, who is this boy who's saying he will go and fight this king, fight, fight this, this, this thing, uh, th this thing. Um, the David, when they told Saul what David had said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God, right? They told the king. Saul said to David, you are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. You are but a youth and don't let nobody despise your youth or the little bit that you have. Don't let nobody despise. It's enough. God is talking to me about a remnant. A remnant is what you have left. You might be divorced. You might be, you might be without human help. Let me tell you, the little bit that you have is enough. Don't compare yourself. The Bible says when we compare ourselves with, with ourselves, it's not wise. So we need to be able to understand this Philistine, hear this? You're not able, the king is telling him now. <clears throat> the Philistine, look at the voices. The enemy is speaking. Now the king is speaking to, Saul, to, to, to David and saying, you're not able. And there are some people who will tell you, you're not able. You're not able to fight against this Philistine. You're only a youth and he is a man of war from his youth. David said, but you don't know my God. My, thy servant, that is me, David, kept his father's sheep and there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. If you touch my flock, you're in trouble. You could be lion, you could be bear. That's what he's saying. And he said, I went out after him. I didn't run and hide. Look at all these big men running and hiding. I didn't run out and hide when, when the lion and the bear came out. I went out after him and I smote him and I delivered it out of his mouth. You could imagine taking something out of a lion's mouth, taking something out of the mouth of a bear. You dare to touch my flock. You understand that 
you are up against the living God because he is my God. And he said, I caught him by his beard. So that's a lion, caught him by his beard. And I smote him and I slew him. He telling, he telling Saul this. Understand, I know little children have these tall tales. This is no tall tale. This is David, the shepherd boy, who spent all of his youth on a hillside with sheep and his God. He said, thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. And David said, moreover, here finishing. He said, moreover, the Lord hath delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, and he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to him, go, and the Lord be with you. He said, well, I can't stop this boy. If he talking about lion and bear, I could only believe his story because all my men hiding. All of them, I can't, I can't even see the army. And Saul armed David with his armor. I'm telling you, the armory that God gave us is better than the armory of kings. Look what King Saul did. He gave him, he put a helmet of brass on David's head and he armed him with a coat of mail. And David girded his sword upon his armor. But he said, I can't go with this. I haven't proved this. I never did this before. Right? And David put it off him, he take off the helmet. He said, I don't know about this. And you see the sword, I don't know about this, right? And he took his staff in his hand, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. He took his staff in his hand, he's a shepherd boy. He know about rod and staff, he don't know about them kind of business, right? And he chose him five smooth stones out of the brook, let me tell you. You know how the you know how them stones get smooth? Weathered. They're weathered by the water. Let me tell you, we are lively stones and we weathered the water of life. And the word of God is water. God is going to water us and we're going to be more than enough. You see that little bit you have? That you're, only, you're saying that's all I have? Let me tell you, that's more than enough. You need to go open your cupboards and put your hand on them little thing that you have, the little bit of meal and the little bit of oil and say, this is more than enough. Breathe on this, Lord. That is what he did. He took his staff, his accustomed tool, and he chose him five small stones. Let me remember, all of us know Kishon Walcott, <laughs> our Olympian javelinist or whatever you call that. He became a javelinist by Kelton Mangoes, right? Sometimes you miss, sometimes he kept up doing it, kept up doing it until he javelin. He represented Trinidad and Tobago and became a, 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 an award, whatever it is. Forgive me, I don't remember what, what he got, but understand, I think he was gold first and then he, whatever. But the important thing is, it reminded me of Kishon Walcott. And I want you to know, God wants us to remember David. Because David took what he's accustomed with. And he took those five smooth stones out of the brook and he put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had even in the script and his sling was in his hand and he drew near to the Philistine. And the Philistine came on and drew near to David. He afraid him, you see? And the man that bear the shield, armor bearer, you're talking about this tall Goliath, plus an armor bearer coming up against this little David, young boy, pretty boy, because they say, but he ruddy, he's a youth, right? So he <laughs> understand, the scripture said he was of a fair countenance. So I put pretty 
He was, he was not even, you know, a mature man. He was a young boy. And understand the, the Philistines say to David, he said, am I a dog that you come to me with these little, little thing that you have in your hand there? And he cursed David by his, do his gods. He cursed David. And the Philistine said to David, come to me and I will give your flesh to the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. Then David said to the Philistine, you come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day will the Lord deliver you into my hand. Let me tell you, you talk about grief here. This giant, this, this, this giant, his name was Goliath. You could, you could put the name, whatever name you want. We're talking tonight about grief. I say in the giant we're dealing with tonight is grief and loss. We can't have a grief and loss support group. And you're just coming to hear a scripture and to get somebody to pray for you. That's not what it will be about. We are about helping hurting people to heal. And the way that is going to happen is through the word of God. God sends his word to heal. Today he's using me, tomorrow he might use you. But the people who know their God is, is, is going to be strong. And here it is. David is saying, this day, the Lord will deliver you into my hand and I will smite you. He talking to this way. He said, you see you? This day, the Lord, the one who delivered me from the lion and the bear, this day, he will deliver you into my hand. And I will smite you. And I will take your head from you. Let me tell you. Listen, I want you to agree with me. Intercessors, I want you to agree with me. I will take your head from you and I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day to the fowls of the air. He turned the whole threat and this is no threat. He is declaring, he's making a declaration, which is different. He said that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. That is the reason. There is a God in Israel. There is a God in Israel. There is a God. The God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob is our God. The God of David is our God. And God wants us to have that same confidence. And all this assembly, he not finished it. He said, all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's. We fighting a lot of things that, that shouldn't be, be out of place. Eh? This, this battle is not yours. This battle that you're fighting with grief over this how much, whatever period. I fight a long time. I fight over a period of years. I did not know that I didn't need to fight. I didn't know that the, this battle was the Lord's. You see the kind of breakthrough that God wants to give us? This, the battle is the Lord's and he will give you into our hands in the name of Jesus. And it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David, David hasted and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and took a stone and he slung it one stone and smote the Philistine in his forehead that the stone sunk into his forehead and he fell on his face to the earth. So David prepared, how many stones he used? He had five stones. <laughs> so David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone and smote the Philistine and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. So you kill this big giant who come with all kind of spear and shield and all kind of weapon, all kind of business. Plus he have an armor bearer that has a shield. Really the armor bearer is like a forebearer. He goes be before. 
So the first darts that are thrown, the shield gets it. And that stone is like the, 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 the Philistines armor bearer was like nothing. No weapon formed against you will prosper. And every tongue that rises against you in judgment, God says you will condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith God. Understand what is happening. That stone went past the armor bearer. Oh my God, have mercy. And therefore, David ran. <laughs> and stood upon the Philistine flat on the ground on his face. He stood upon the Philistine. You can imagine standing upon your enemy. And he took his sword. Whose sword? David had no sword. There was no sword in David's hand. He took the Philistine's sword and he drew it out of the sheath and he slew him and he cut off his head. Didn't he say he was going to do that? He said he was going to do it, right? And he cut off his head with the sword. He, his, he cut off his head with the Philistine's own sword. And when the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they fled. You see, who should, do you, who should be doing the running? It's not us. Mute your mics, please. Yes not us, the enemy needs to run and hide. I just want to say to us today that one of the tools, I know it had sling and but his testimony, that was a tool. And you and I need to know how to use our testimony. Sometimes we say, about all the trouble first, and then a little thing we say, God, do something for us, and I'm good now. God, I get no glory in that. Once I was blind, now I could see. You understand? We need to, we need to be able to embellish. No, embellish probably is not the right word, but we need to make our boast in the Lord. Is God good or not? Do we have a track record? Do we have a lion? Do we have a bear in our, in our arsenal that we could, we could bring out and we could say, you see what he did with that in time past? Well, you know he's going to do it in the future. If God was so good to me and so faithful in bringing me through this, he could bring me through that. No weapon formed against us will prosper. And every tongue that will rise against us in judgment, we condemn. God, he sent a boy who was a champion, who knew his God, and who knew how to use his tools. Now, I'm closing, and I just want to be able to say this. Psalm 78 verse 9 talks about the children of Ephraim being armed, armed and carrying bows turned back in the day of battle. You don't want to run away in the day of battle. That's the day to face your, that's the time to face your enemy, not to run. Face your enemy in the name of Jesus. If God be for you, who can be against you? The children of Ephraim being armed, they were armed. Why are you running away if you're armed? Being armed and carrying bows, that is, the fifth. if you're good at that, that is what you need to be. To be. David, David had a sling and he was good at it. They were armed. They carried bows. They turned back in the day of battle. That is a reproach. Don't, don't turn back now. Don't turn back. Psalm 90 verse 1. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Some of you are 
in a second and third generation. Your, your, your grandmother used to serve God. Your mother used to serve God. What happened to you now? What happened to me now? We need to serve God. And we need to make sure that we are raising holy seed. We shouldn't have our hands hanging down now and we don't be wary. Uh, and we, we overcome with we, we, we grief so we, we can't build. We can't, no, now is the time to build. When you have nobody but God, I'm telling you. Except the Lord build a house, the labor in vain that built it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman wakes in vain. So if it's just you and God, you're good, you're good, you're good. I really want to help you to understand that you have enough. I really mean that very kindly, <laughs> right? You don't need horses. You don't need chariots. You don't need to check to see how many people on your side. Don't, don't do that. The arm of flesh will fail you. That's in the word. So if the arm of flesh will fail you, don't test it. Know your God. The people that know their God shall be strong. I want to pray for you. I believe that God has spoken. I, 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 I pray that, I, I don't know if, um, Reverend Ruth, are there any, um, any questions or anything on the chat? Any prayer requests? No, nothing yet. Nothing yet. All right. I want to pray. Just put your hand over your heart. You don't have to do anything else. Just put your hand. Just put your hand. So it is, it's not my neighbor. It's not my brother, my sister, Lord, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. So everybody have their hand on, their, on themselves. And we represent ourselves, but we represent our families. We represent all the, the issues that have weighed upon us, all those things that we have been you know, journaling in the wrong way, but we want to have a new beginning. But Lord, today, today, Lord, today, we want a new start. And if any of you have not received the Lord, have never, have never opened your life to the Lord, let me tell you, that is how it starts. You know, it starts with a relationship with God. God, all that he has done is to draw us into a relationship with him. And God, God is saying, come, all you that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. We're looking for rest in the wrong places. Rest comes from God. God says, come unto me, all you that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. God wants to exchange. He wants to give you, he wants to take your heavy burdens. And he wants to give you his burden. His burden is light. The burden of the Lord is light. It is pleasurable. I bear the burden of the Lord upon my life. And it has changed my life. It has brought joy. It has, it has lightened my life. Those who know me from a long time, <laughs> it's a different person. Oh, we're about to pray, so let, 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 let's, let's pray. Oh, God, we need you. Hitherto, you have helped us. You're faithful. You're merciful. You have not dealt with us after our sins, nor have you rewarded us according to our iniquities. As far as the East is from the West, so far you have removed our transgressions from us. And today we confess our sins before you. We confess that we have limited the Holy One of Israel. We confess that we have had other gods beside you. We have, we have looked to other, other help beside you when our help comes from you. We ask you to forgive us. We ask you to give us a new start, to give us a new beginning. We ask for your grace at work in our lives. Father, breathe upon this platform today. 
hover over us, Lord. You see everyone who is obedient and who has submitted and have their hands upon their bodies today. If those bodies have any sickness, let them be healed in the name of Jesus. If they represent anyone who has sickness or who has anything that is not of you, in the name of Jesus, we declare wholeness and health to be restored in the name of Jesus. We pray that you will comfort all that mourn in Zion. We pray, God, that you will heal the brokenhearted, that you will set the captives free. We pray that you will unlock the prison houses, the places that we have been locked up, Lord, in our lives, that we have been, we have suffered long enough. We unlock those prison houses. Let our souls be, 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 be escaped from a snare, like a bird from a snare in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for a new beginning. You alone are our God and beside you there is no other God. And we acknowledge that today and we confess it. And we say, be our God. And we give you thanks today for hearing and answering our prayer. Lord, you have promised that you will help the hurting people on this platform to heal. And I pray that you will bring healing to every life. As we go our several ways from each other, we pray that we will go whole and we will go healed in the name of Jesus. We pray that your blood will be upon us and that you will cleanse us and that you'll comfort the waste areas of our lives. Make us strong where we were weak and let your anointing destroy every yoke. We thank you for your mercies in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray with thanksgiving.